glad Sunday morning, boys and girls. Are you ready to learn another Bible memory verse again with Nanny Rosebud this morning? We have been learning the verses for the Lord's model prayer found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. I'm going to recite them for you now, and if you can remember them, say them along with me. You don't have to be perfect. I'm going to be adding the 13th verse when I recite it. Matthew 6, 9 to 13. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Did you say most of those verses with me? Very good. Could you say them all? Excellent, because we haven't even practiced together 13th verse. Today we're going to practice the 13th verse, and that verse is Matthew 6 13 and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew 6 13. That is a long verse, but we're going to look at it in parts. The first part, we're asking God and lead us not into temptation. So we're asking God to lead us away from temptation. We have to ask God to do this because we have to acknowledge that he is to lead us and we are not to lead ourselves. If we lead ourselves, we will most definitely lead ourselves in the way we are most tempted. But if we remember to ask God to lead us, he will lead us. Remember, he's given us a free will. He does not ask us to follow him blindly. He wants us to trust him, to follow him, but not to follow him because he made us follow him. He wants us to choose to trust him. So we have to ask him to lead us. We're asking him to lead us away from temptation, to protect us from temptation. So we're saying to our Heavenly Father, lead us away from temptation. What is temptation? Temptation is when there's something that is testing your obedience to God. Perhaps it's some way that you're being tested in your obedience to your parents. Or perhaps it's some other way that your obedience is being tested. When you are tempted, it's like seeing candy on the counter and being told you can't have that candy until after you eat your broccoli. But when no one's looking, you hide your broccoli and you eat the candy. That was a temptation. And then you yielded to that temptation by disobeying. So you might be tempted or tested in your obedience. And you are asking the Lord to lead you away from temptation. Lord, don't let that candy on the counter tempt me to disobey you. Now that doesn't mean the candy is going to magically disappear. It might mean that the Lord is helping you to be strong enough to say to yourself, I'm strong enough to wait until after I eat my broccoli and then I will enjoy that candy on the counter. That might be what the Lord is doing. But it also might be that other people might try to tempt you to do wrong. You might have a good friend who really wants to do something that you know you should not do. 
and your friend is a good friend and they know you should not do it and they should not do it but they want to do it anyway so to make it easier for them to disobey they try to get you to disobey with them perhaps you're at a friend's house and there are cookies in the cookie jar and your friend knows this because it's his house and it's his cookie jar and he says let's go sneak a cookie out of the cookie jar but you know you're to always ask permission to have a cookie and because your friend said let's go sneak a cookie you knew that he was supposed to ask permission and he knew it too so when your friend said let's go sneak a cookie out of the cookie jar they knew they were disobeying and they wanted you to join them in to make it easier for them to disobey too. So you're tempted to disobey what you know to be right. You know that it's always the right thing to ask for permission. And you know that permission is not being asked and you're being tempted to do something without asking permission. That's a temptation. So we're to ask the Lord to lead us away from temptation. So we're asking, Lord, please don't let my friends tempt me to do naughty things today. Help my friends, too, not to be tempted to do naughty things. Help me to obey you and help me to be a good example to my friends so they'll obey, too. That's what praying this part of the prayer is like. And lead us not into temptation. So we're asking God to help us not to be tempted or help us to obey even when the temptation is right in front of us. It doesn't mean there won't be temptations and it doesn't mean the temptations come from God. God doesn't tempt us with bad things to get us to do bad things. God doesn't do that, but God does test so he will allow Things to tempt us. He will allow other people to tempt us to test our obedience to Him. That's not the same thing because God allows a free will. Other people have the free will to obey and disobey. You have the free will to obey and disobey. God might allow someone to disobey because they have the free will to choose it. He might allow someone to tempt you to test whether you are going to come to him to ask you to help him, to help you, ask him to help you. So you can pray this prayer at the moment you're tempted. When you're tempted to ask um, for a second cookie, when you've already been told one cookie is your limit, that's it. But you're tempted to ask for a second one when you know the limit is firm and you shouldn't pester your parents again, then you can ask the Lord to help you. Lord, don't let me be tempted to ask again when I know I shouldn't. When you are with your friend and he says, let's sneak a cookie out of the cookie jar, you might be tempted to do so. So at that moment, you can pray, Lord, don't let this temptation overpower me. Let me resist this temptation and be strong. That's how you're to pray. Now remember, God doesn't tempt us to do sin, but he allows our faith to be tested when we are tempted to do sin. There's a difference. So we are to pray and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That means deliver our escape, give us an escape. The Bible teaches that every time we're tempted, there is an escape door. So every time the evil one tempts us to do something wrong, there's an escape door that God has provided. We are to ask him to show us the escape door. So when we say, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, we're saying to God, Dear Heavenly Father, whenever the evil one tempts me, show me the escape door and help me to get through it. That's what we're to pray. And that's how we're to pray. And that's what it means when we say, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We are acknowledging that 
the evil one will tempt us and he'll use our best friends to tempt us. He'll use something innocent like a candy bar on the counter that we get to have after supper to tempt us, to test our faith, not to trick us or deceive us to do something wrong, but to test our faith and our obedience to him. Because every time we're tempted, he gives us a an exit door, an escape door. So all we have to do is ask him to lead us out the escape door to escape that temptation. So whenever we're tempted, instead of giving in to the temptation in our weakness, we're to use our strength and build our faith muscles up, use our muscles in faith, and ask God to show us the exit door to escape to escape that temptation and be delivered from doing that wrong thing. So the verse is, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's the first part of the verse. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So, Father, when we're tempted to do wrong, show us the escape door so that we can escape. Lord, when we're tempted to do wrong, help me to help us to exercise our faith muscle and be obedient to you and go out that escape door. Father, when we're tempted to do wrong, help us to ask you to show us the escape door and give us the strength and faith and obedience to obey you and get out that escape door quickly. That's the way we should pray when we say, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the last part of the verse is the conclusion of the verse, which says, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we're saying the word thine again, and that's addressing God. That's that King James English old-fashioned way from 1500s of saying yours. Thine means yours. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Yours, God, is the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. It's your kingdom of heaven, God. It's your power above everyone else because you're the master of the universe and you deserve all the glory and honor forever and ever and all the praise forever and ever and ever because you are the one true living God who created the world and all things in it. You are the holy, perfect master of the universe. That's what that verse is saying. So we're to praise God at the end of our prayer. We're to thank him. We're to ask these things and we are to thank him. We're to thank him because it is his kingdom. We're to thank him because he's the one and the only one who has the right to rule us. And we are to thank him and glorify him for his power, for his glory and his honor. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That's the second part of the verse. One more time. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So what does amen mean? We've talked about that before. It doesn't mean the end, although it is the end of the prayer. Amen doesn't mean the end of the prayer. Amen means let it be. Let these words be true. Let this be true. This is true. So amen means this is true. Let it be true. Let your words be true. It means all of those things. So when we say, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are saying, Lord, when I'm tempted, show me the escape door so I can escape quickly and not fall into that temptation to sin. For you are all powerful. It's your kingdom in heaven, and you deserve all the glory and honor and praise forever and ever. These words are true. Let them be true. That's what we mean when we say that verse. So you don't have to say those exact words when you pray to God in your prayers, but you are to always end those prayers in that same manner, praising God and thanking him for his 
power and his kingdom and his glory and his honor and letting these things always be true forever. So do you think we could say Matthew 6.13 from beginning to ending together? Matthew 6.13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew 6.13. Now, let's try to say Matthew 6:13 after we've said Matthew 6, 9 through 12. So this time we're going to say Matthew 6, 9 to 13. Say all of the verses, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And then we're going to say Matthew 6, 9 to 13 again at the end. Now, if you don't get it perfect, that's okay. We just keep practicing. But we're going to say that one time together. And we'll come back next week and practice the whole thing again. So it's okay if you don't get it perfect. Ready? Let's begin. Matthew 6, 9 to 13. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven and give us this day our daily bread for, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen matthew 6 9 to 13 do you want to try that one more time? Because even Nanny Rosebud didn't get that perfect that time. Do you want to try it with me again? Do you know where I made my mistake? I put an extra and in when I said, give us this day our daily bread. There's no and there. So let's try it again because Nanny Rosebud wants to get this perfect too. Are you ready? Matthew 6, 9 to 13. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew 6, 9 to 13. And we're going to say it one last time together, and then we'll come back again next week. Ready? Matthew 6, 9 to 13. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Matthew 6, 9 to 13. Very well. So next week, we're going to come back. We're going to recite the whole Lord's Prayer again. And then we're going to talk about ways to pray besides the Lord's Model Prayer. So we'll see you next Sunday. Have a glad Sunday, boys and girls.